has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty, man. This is this is history right hey, here, brother. Yeah, yeah. This is history. It's about to go down, man. All eyes on me. The movie. We got my guy LT Hutton in the neighborhood, and it, LT is like backbone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and I gotta ask you, LT, before we move on to Demetrius Ship Jr., who plays Tupac in the movie as well. And I, I, you know, it's still hard for me to look at you, bro. Like, even when he was walking down, the, <laughs> he he walked down the hallway, and I was like, damn. And I had to tell him, like, man, it's crazy to look. You know what I'm saying? Side profile too. Yeah, side profile. Front profile. Front profile. You know what I'm saying? If I stood up here and looked down on the same profile, (laughs) let me ask you this, LT. Why do this movie? See, because that's for you to jump out and do this movie. It seems like an All Eyes on Me would be one of the hardest movies Mm -hmm. you could pull off or want to get into because what Pac means to the world. Mm -hmm. Why did you take that on? Um, That's just in my nature. You know, if you're gonna do something, you know. Try to do the hardest, you mm. know, because the hardest, you know, gets you in shape. You like you lift the biggest weights, gives you the biggest muscles. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and the consistency of. It. So for me, um, I didn't really consider it hard. You know, um, it was a solving of the Rubik's cube for sure. But um, I honestly did not know it would be that hard. And did, that's just that's just the truth. Years you know ago, I mean? did you ever think that you would be the person that was going to deliver? The Tupac movie? Never. Right. Had no idea. You know what I mean? And like like I say, I often, you know, I say everything happened for a reason. And um, when I took on the challenge, you know, and being able to even just connect the dots, you know, I knew then, mm-hmm. you know, that, okay, this is part of, you know, my mission, you know, and what I want to do. And then I had all the tools, you know what I mean, to, to be able to put it together when, I, when I'm looking for it. What do you mean by all the tools? Meaning the makeup. Right, right. The, the mechanisms, the upbringing. You know, mm-hmm. when when I when I say, you know, about where I come from in Chicago, you know, I used to ask God like, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Like, mm-hmm. no kid should go through what I'm going through. But it was all a, a strengthening process, you know, to get me to where I needed to be, able to have the tenacity to get through this part, because I, I, you know, this thing. Damn, it took me under. I can imagine, You know bro. what I'm saying? In every sense of that word, when everybody's like, oh, they're getting paid. No, we weren't. There's no money. You know what I mean? You don't get money until film goes into production and you start making it. And then by that time, the money is so small in that sense that if you, you have to break it down and say, okay, well, 10 years. So if you got, say, a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000, mm-hmm. break that down into 10 years. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, come it's on, not, man. It's not a lot of money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you making money. You, you can do that part-time in, down in Mickey D's. You know what I'm saying? In 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when you think about that and then um, what it takes to actually make a picture like this, you don't have time to hustle on the side and do anything because this literally takes, I mean, all the time you have and sucks all the energy out of you. You know what I'm saying? So it is definitely, you know, on a picture like this, it, it had to be more than a monetary right. scenario. Was there any time, LT, where it was too much that you was like, man, I don't know if I want to do this? Every day, all day. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. You know, at, at a certain point, it was just like really like, you know, especially like with all the rumors, the speculations and not being able to respond and, you know, and, and people telling lies and, 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 and making up acquisitions and you know and when you don't comment you know Mm -hmm. now we're living in a social world where you know um people are addicted to comments and likes Mm -hmm. so when they get a taste of that attention they just go crazy on social media because they never felt it before Mm -hmm. i've i've always felt it and i really never cared about you know the, the the spotlight you know and that's how i've maintained so long in my career and then i'll pop up and people like what do he really do though? Right. Cause we see him all the time, but we never see him out there. And then, but they see the um, progress in life through their eyes and certain things, you know what I'm saying? But they really never could put their finger quite on what LT Hutton does. What was your relationship with Park LT? Whirlwind. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the relationship was more or less uh, Snoop introduced us. You know, I woke up one morning, he was in the kitchen, you know, but, for me, I had always rocked with him, you know what I'm saying? And like from the political side um, to the conscious side, mm-hmm. you know, and then watching the turn going into 
a different direction. You know what I mean? Um, I got him. I mm-hmm. always understood and I got him. So I followed him in, you know, and being in the industry, it's like me, if me and you never hung out just because I'm in this industry, I can nine times out of 10 tell you a lot about big boy mm-hmm. because I, we in the same circles and we run in the same things and, and we get. And our degree of separation is small. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, you know, I can say certain things and you'll be able to come right back and fill it in because me and you were either there, heard the story. Right. You know what I mean? Or was around the vicinity of something. So, you know, the hip hop community is a very small circle. So I felt like I always, I knew him my entire, you know, career because I watched his career, but intimately, um, of us actually work rock rocking together it was like a year you know what i mean of death row mm-hmm. and for a lot of people that everybody got that same year wow mm. and that, that was like you still had a chance to actually see the work and everything yeah you see the thing is um we rocked together every day for the simple fact you know i didn't have nowhere to go i was you know <laughs> i live with snoop right right so, <laughs> so if snoop is in the studio which we were 24 hours a day almost you know we were at his house 24 hours a day and then you know him and uh snoop had um penthouses twin penthouses on wilshire Mm -hmm. so the day Pac got out of jail instantly he came to the studio i was you know from the house in claremont to the studio yes sir and every day all day so our um our recreation like that's why it was important for me in the film to flush out can-am because uh you want to play basketball you know if you wanted to lift weights if you wanted to watch a dog fight or two, you know what I'm saying? Right. If, you to, right there. if you wanted to catch a, a cage match, you know what I'm saying? A, 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 a battle royale, you know, whatever you wanted to do in can it was in there. You know what I'm saying? So it was its own world, and we never really left. That now, world. Was is at the compound studio? That's the studio. Yes, yeah, that's the Death Row studio, the famous Death Row studio. Mm-hmm. So every day, all day. And then, like I said, uh, even to the point where I created a room because, you know, Dr. Dre, of course, had carte blanche on anything he wanted to do in there. And then if Daz wasn't working in the front room, you know, it was always something. So I'm like, okay, when 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 everybody's not working, I need to work too. Or when everybody's working, I need to work too. Right. So I created this small little room out of a tape closet that wow. became famous to being called the whack room. Whoa. It wasn't whack because the songs were whack. It was just get it together in here, then bring it to the big studios. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, um, and, you know, like I said, I just got some rental equipment, Shug, and he Shug tells this story all the time because I was just like, look, I need these pieces of equipment. He's like, what you going to do with it? You take it? I'm not. Nah, just give me the equipment. So I went and took a tape room and set up a little small studio, and that studio turned out Hail Mary mm. from Tyrone and, and all those guys. Um, most, of, most of Machiavelli album came from the rack room. It didn't start off in A or right. B. Right. It started off in the whack room and then moved over. Daryl and all those people, they were in the whack in the whack room. And then those songs came over out of the whack room. Like ninety something percent. That's like the Mac finishing Academy. school. Yeah. Now Demetrius, are you ready, bro? Yeah, I certainly. Am, I don't bro. think you are, bro. <laughs> 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 Tell him, babe. Demetrius, I really don't think you are, bro. You know Listen, what I'm saying? It's a, uh, it's a, and Demetrius, you got kids, right? Yeah, three kids. Uh, three kids. So happy Father's Day to you. It's yeah. really important. Appreciate this. it. Same to you. Uh, how old are your kids? Uh, seven. <laughs> we gonna do this again. Seven, yeah. three, and he about to be three. The other one. Okay. The seven year old does he know what's no, that's about my, to happen? That's my daughter. The my seven year old, the, the, your daughter, does she know what's about to happen? Yeah, she knows what's about to happen. She about to share you with the world. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Cool story on that with my daughter. Uh. So the billboards had went up, but I didn't know. Oh, so man. Um, I was dropping my son off of school on, uh, I won't say. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that going to be a problem too. <laughs> right. So I'm driving up the street. I'm trying to make a left. And I, you know what I'm saying? My daughter like gasped like, daddy. And I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, what? Yeah, I look yeah, back. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? And she just pointing up and it's a billboard up. You know what I'm saying? And she like, wow. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the first time we had seen it. Together. I didn't even know what's up. Yeah. Let me tell you, I remember the one day when I called you, I was on the 405. I was like, man. And it was one of the things I need to get in touch with him. I'm rolling on the And I said, man, do you know what I'm looking at on the 405? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that building. I'm like, man, let me let me ask you this, bro. And, and, and I know we've had a chance to sit down before, but for those who probably didn't catch, when did you first start hearing, like, man, you, you look like Pac? Probably like high school. Really? Somebody hit me uh, on Facebook the other day. It was like, bro, it was way before that. Like, really, though? But I, that's my first memory that I remember, like, you know what I'm saying, when I was called. Like, Did they Pac call the you Pac yeah. in high school? Yeah, in high school, I got called Pac, like, by the seniors or whatever. Damn. Did, did that feel like like destiny? 
Now nah. that you look back, look, everybody got a nickname. You mm. know what I'm saying? In high school, especially growing up. So. Yeah, but but cats they don't. Call don't. People pop. Yeah, no, I'm right. just, you know what I'm saying? It's then they you get mean. the pop movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy, but. Everybody has like it was people in high school that looked like certain people, and that was their nickname. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that just happened to and be. And none mom. of them sitting here doing an interview and sitting next to <laughs> right. you as a director and playing pop. Yeah, exactly. yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. Do people try to get in touch with you now? Oh man, it's, I heard it's wild. We had a call that after we did the first interview, they was like, "Oh, he's stuck up now. He's difficult." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tell him Marvin said hello. You know, okay, <laughs> no, I didn't have. But do you get a lot of people that want to get in touch with you now? Yeah, man, it's it's weird mm-hmm. and. You know, it's it's a thing that I got to kind of get accustomed yeah. to. I kind of got to handle on it now. You know what I'm saying? But my whole thing is that um, be real with the situation. Be real with yourself. I'm never per- a person that's going like I've I've had people that been on and got to certain right, levels right, and stuff, right, and right. I ain't know that you got on and it's like, oh, let's hang out now. If we wasn't rocking like that, you feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right, so right, be I real with the situation. If we wasn't rocking like that now, then don't. There's no need for us to chill, bro. Exactly. Like, if we was in enemies in high school, don't call me because you yeah, see me in Vegas yeah. and say, oh, what's up, bro? Let's turn up. Man. You out here? Like, you here too, huh? Yeah, that's like, that's, crazy, that's, that's that's weird, bro, on some man-to-man stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, just keep it G. You know what I'm saying? Real. If if we ain't like that, then keep it as it is. You know, I, I, I appreciate all the, like, love and, you know what I'm saying, congratulations. That's different. But when it comes to, like, expecting stuff or wanting to do stuff yeah. or let's get up and let's chill, Brother, I don't move like Wanna that. Want to be all you know up saying? in the premiere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll to the red carpet. He's going to get used what to the did, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It's Hollywood. And you got a crash course because this uh-huh, is fast, yeah. Jack. You know, yeah. as long as it took to put it together. But now it's like, it, now, man, your foot is on the gas now. What yeah. did you do beforehand? Uh, Brother, I, well, like when I, what, 2015, before it all got real, mm-hmm. I was at Dish Network, you know, climbing on the roofs. Are and, you uh, serious? Install the satellite and under the house. Can you still that. do that though? Yeah, I probably could. You know, saying put a little okay, something. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he, he probably got all kind of splices. They're gonna be like Demetrius Ship Jr., the star of All Eyes on Me, was arrested for cable piracy. <laughs> so you work for Dish Network. It's crazy, and then at some point, <laughs> your movie is gonna be in like some of your old customers' homes. Man, for real. Like, man, I hooked that up right there. So you was on top of rooftops. Man, you were at Target out, as well. Yeah, that was like in two thousand eight. Yeah, 2007. That was one of one of my. But first your jobs. last gig was Dish Network. My very last job. was When Dish. do you say I'm leaving Dish Network because I think I got something here with this Tupac All now, Eyes on Me movie? That's an interesting question and funny that you asked that because mm-hmm. I was on disability when I. Uh, <laughs> nah, listen, <laughs> I was on disability leave from Dish, right? And I'm thinking I'm Did going back. Did you fall back. off a roof or something? Nah, I had hurt my back and I was stressed out. It was just a whole lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had had them two babies. You know yeah, it was a whole yeah. lot going on. So, um, yeah, I was on I was on leave, and then let me see how this happened. Everything was going crazy, I, you know. And Life. I called, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I'm still in acting classes. I'm still trying to get the role and all this hmm. stuff. So I call up because the money low at this point. I'm like my 401k. I'm like I need some bread, but they're like, you know, this was in like February or March. They're like, you can't get it out because, yo, you got to get it approved. So then April came, May came. I called them again like, all right, I'm going to just go ahead and get it approved. But they're like, no, nah, you don't have to now because you're not with the company. I'm like, what? Huh? Wait, what, Dish Network? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, what you mean I'm not with the company? So I called Dish. They're like, uh, yeah, bro, we sent you a letter in the mail. You don't work here no more. Oh, oh damn. No. Cancel your <laughs> subscription, <laughs> Jack. Like, really? they, they canceled that subscription That's to the cold. paycheck. Well, like, I, I, no, thought, yeah. I thought I had a job to go back to. So I really... If it wasn't this, I don't know what was really going to happen. I heard that. You would have been at Direct TV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you would have you showed them. Go to the competition, Jack. Exactly. Man, man so when did you audition for the movie? Did Like, was it, was it, LT, was it an open audition or? Because was, we had other pox, right? I mean, you had everybody in the world running around saying that they had the yeah. role. And they were, you know, going doing red carpet events and, you know, I, I Crazy. I never understood that if mm-hmm. I if I never, you didn't give it to him, yeah, I, never right, right. You, I never said you got the role, so I don't even understand it. But it, uh, we did an open call because I didn't want people to think that um, we didn't go as hard as mm-hmm. we went to find, you know. And like I said, we, I wanted to see everything. I did y'all to, know each other before you saw Demetrius? Nah, I, last time I saw Demetrius, he was like a kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't even know how old he was, but he was very, very young. So it. Uh, no, I never had even met him. So no, what I knew, happens? I knew his dad. Does he well. walk in, or does an audition tape come to you? Yeah, like what happened was there was a um he did an online audition, and like you know there's multiple versions of the story, but like I I just kept it one hundred. Like when the video was sent, I didn't even it it didn't register. 
so to speak. You follow what I'm saying? Mm. And then I saw it, okay. But the real time when it really happened is when he came into the office mm. for the first time and I actually physically saw him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, dude, like, when he walked in, LT. Like, those videos get lost. You were know you saying? like, what the hell? I was, you know, I was I was absolutely, um, matter of fact, I'll just tell you this. I was relieved. I heard that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I was like, Found okay, it. aesthetically, because that's that was so important mm-hmm. because it's like I explained to people, you know, um, you couldn't put Jesus on a circle. Everybody knows he was on the cross. Right. Exactly. Like, to change that. It's just wrong, you know what I'm saying? It's like I don't care how good of a story you make if you put Jesus right yeah. on, at the end of Passion of the Christ. If you hung him on a circle, people would be like, "Like man, come on," you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with Pac being so, and like it's just you know somebody out there just asked me, "Is it true the study that you know one of the, one of the the most famous imageries um, is Jesus, and they have Pac." In like that top five Damn. of most famous iconic imageries. You know what I mean? So when you're dealing with somebody like that, man, it's aesthetically, you cannot get it wrong. And, you know, like I say, when Hollywood trying to say, okay, you know, well, you know, it questioned me about color. Tupac wasn't light skinned though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, well, it, as an actor, you, listen, you cannot have a light skinned Tupac. It's just like, Right. All black people and don't espe- look like. Yeah, especially we would have tripped. Oh, yeah. Right. We would have tripped. It would have crucified man. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would have started it. <laughs> I would have been like, man, y'all know L.T. Hutton? I would have been like, hey, get that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, and it's like I said, like, you know, I'm not, I don't try to pun these things. But, you know, when I sat and, and, and tried to watch the Leah story and, and they walked in the room and there's this 70-pound uh, little light-skinned guy and he said, Timberland. Yeah, what Timberland? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and that—that's Timberland. It's like right. You want to give us something? It, it bro. just made me want to throw the the flash screen. It's like, why would they do that? Yeah, but you know don't do saying? that though. Yeah, well, we you know you got bread to it, throw it. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't throw the flash screen. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. aesthetically, we wanted to just you know make sure it's there, but not just that. You needed to have the entire spirit. Yeah, you know, and through all the the jobs and everything when we met. And this is where people, you know, I will take the credit here because I pride myself As you should. into finding new talent and knowing who has the capabilities. You know, in Hollywood, they like to try to say, well, this has to be this normally, normally. And I hate normally because things are not done until they're done. Like you wouldn't have groundbreaking scenarios if people just say normally. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, how do you like for me normally? is an excuse saying <clears throat> that you have no vision or mm. no creativity. Ooh. You understand what I'm saying? Because normally it's done right. like this. This normally. is how it's usually done. Yeah. Now, you got you to gotta think outside the box. If, if we thought normal, we wouldn't have the internet right now. Mm-hmm. In some parts of the internet, I wish they would have kept. <laughs> you know right, right, saying? right. Like, you know, so um, in the traditional format, he wasn't casted traditional. It was a non-traditional casting scenario. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a first-time actor. So... For, to get him to deliver the way he did mm-hmm. and to prove the system wrong mm-hmm. on who can do what, this opens up an entire different world, you know, of hope. You know what I'm saying? To people that say, oh, you can't do this. Right. Hollywood's never going to do it. You don't fit the bill. It's like when they talk about size in Hollywood and you can't be this size or you won't get this role. And you see all these girls running around here looking emaciated yeah, because man. they're talking about, I got to get ready for TV. Like you're unhealthy. Like that's you know I'm big too, but that right there, that disease and you know making yourself sick to fit into the, the shape and the form of what Hollywood say you gotta be, that's not cool. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like I said, um, I told him day one, he got it. Really though, wow. he got to do the and work. When when you tell someone <laughs> if, day if one, the work was done, I said, right, right, yeah. I, said, <laughs> I said if if you dedicate yourself and do the work, you have it. When you know. That you got the role as Tupac. Mm-hmm. What do you do from that point on? Well, like, how do you study? Well, it was listen. With him saying it was not traditional, it wasn't traditional. I didn't get the call that I had the role until twelve days before I had to go to Atlanta for pre-production. Oh damn! So wow. literally, from the time I got the role, it wasn't even a month before I was shooting the movie. Oh, wow. I was just no. studying. See, and, that's that black case. <laughs> 
No, no. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking to you right now, LG. Go ahead, man. Let's do, man. I'm telling you, man. Oh, man, he can you know, get there we, tomorrow? No, 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 no. We, we, we paid for the acting nah, coach. No, nah, he did. No, so oh, let me get to that, though. So he, <laughs> oh, okay, LG. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so in- It was boot camp. It was, it was, it was like a boot camp. <laughs> right. Um, matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and tell that story briefly. Like I did my last audition in like August eight sixteenth. The disability ran out like the eighteenth, and the rent was oh, doing the first. Wow! <laughs> right, I had one month of rent left. I didn't know how I was gonna make October, September like twenty first or something. I get that call from LT like, "How much you need a week? We gonna put you in. You know what I'm saying for the, uh, the acting coach. We gonna put mm. you with the trainer, mm. and we gonna you know what I'm saying get you straight financially so you can you know what I'm saying go right, you and have make to worry sure. about that exactly. This is not so, the studio though. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not this, 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 this is, ain't they money. This is just planting the <laughs> seed and having faith. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. And and along with that too, it was more so LT already had in his mind mm-hmm. that this I was the guy. But mm-hmm. it, it was like with it being non traditional, everybody else they wanted to cast their net far and wide to the very last second right. before they was just like all okay. Demetrius. You know what I'm saying? But in that time, it was just like. Me preparing to, you know, with, with watching videos and with my acting coach, we was reading the, bo- the, the books that Tupac read. You know what I'm saying? I studied like Shakespeare. I went to the school of Shakespeare. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was doing was actually remembering and, and, and learning the Tupac interviews verbatim. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? And that's how I got like the mannerisms down. I would sit next to the TV, record myself along with Pac saying the, wow. the interviews. You know what I'm saying? Play it back, get it. You know what I'm saying? Got all the the, the cadence down, the whole thing. So that's how you know, like the mannerisms and stuff pretty much developed. How does a so-called first-time actor go and do all that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that, and that was something that I put on myself. I surprised them with that one. I learned the, the MTV Christmas interview. It's like eight minutes. I just I learned it, wrote it down on my phone. I remember I still got it in my phone. I wrote, I wrote the whole monologue, the whole thing wow. down. And I'm like, all right, I got it. And I just learned it, learned it. I told my coach about it. I'm like, this is what I want to do. Boom, and I sent it to them. And they was Damn. like blown away by it. Man, because there's time like and there was nothing that they added to you. Of course, the, the the tattoos and everything, but like even when I just saw like I'm looking at eyebrows, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Was your nose pierced before then? Nah. Okay. I, I got this pain when I got the roll. Really though? <laughs> yeah, so so you time. made sure you got it pierced though, as opposed yeah. to like, man, ain't no magnet. There's no magnet we could put on. Nah, hold on. This is the thing. Back in 2011 when I first went in, right? He was like, man, if you really want it, you got to go all the way. You know what I'm saying? Get your nose pierced for real. Go ball for real. So that's what I did back then in 2011. You know what I'm saying? I had it for a minute then. You know what I'm saying? Stuff had to progress. So the nose ring came out. But this time I was like, listen, you know, I got to know it's real. Before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, man, are we stopping production? That nose again. And, and the thing is, there could have been a movie about the piercing of the nose uh, yeah. this time. Not on my part, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just because it was like, well, they was making it seem like, it was him, but it wasn't him. It's like when he did it before the audition, it, what the production hadn't started. Now that the production has started, you know, there was. You had a, to go get it pierced again? There was a meeting about the nose ring. It was a meeting, yeah, because he had to get it re-pierced. They called a round table. It was a big <laughs> round table. Wow. And I walked into the meeting and we discussing the nose ring, the time it takes to heal, who's going to do it, what doctor. I said, Liz, you, you go to the mall. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. You, know, the, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, y'all making this whole thing. And I think. Uh, um, and it actually uh, came with a heavy tab, too, because, like, to get your nose pairs at the mall is, like, a couple of dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the process that they went through and, and I'm going to keep it the, real with you, time, I was it, it cost, like, a couple hundred. You know what I'm saying? To do but the... The nose piercing, but that's that was on me. I told him, I need a real diamond. Oh, hell yeah, <laughs> man. You want your nose <laughs> getting all that shit in. I need, that, that, I need, that, that, I need a real it, diamond. It yeah. was the manpower, the staffing that, that they took and the doctor, oh, yeah. whoever they went, took yeah, it to yeah, and all that. They turned in them bills. I'm like, oh... It was it was a mess. Did, now, they, with, do with, did they do it with the needle? Yeah, it's, it's listen. A big, it's a difference when they do it with the needle and, and the, the gun. gun. The gun is the first time. The needle, she was like, oh, it's cool. It's smooth yeah. with the needle. Lay back. Cool. I'm like, all right, it's going to be smooth. It's going to be right through. Boom. Man, she did that needle. The tears are just yeah. like, oh. <laughs> but it, <laughs> what the hell? Like? It's better with the needle, though, because it doesn't shatter your cartilage. Man, so. I don't, it did something. <laughs> it made me cry. For sure. For, it just oh, automatically you make too? your, your, your nose, to. your ears oh, start, nose. Your eyes start watering when you get it done, for sure. Man, how how many times? And you know, and we know that Pac passed, mm-hmm. but how many times have you been? And not even times like like that. You 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 got to get the double takes. Oh, yes. You got to get the that's hymns. Have you have you ever been on one of those where people are like, oh man, Pac in Cuba or something? Has, <laughs> has we ever seen a picture of you? 
that somebody mistaken. He's alive. Oh my gosh, right? right? Like, man, like, have random people, even before the movie, came up and do they say, do you know who you look like? Oh, yeah, man. All the time. Everywhere I went. I have took pictures when I was, I promise you, I'm not making this up, at Dish Network, getting off of people's, you know what I'm saying, houses. <laughs> you they don't mind. Like, Can you, yeah, you don't mind. Do you, can I take a picture with you? You look so much like Tupac. Damn. Like, all right, You're like, whatever. yeah. <laughs> even when, what would you do if you tried not to look like Tupac? I mean, I cannot look like I'll get braids or something. Right, Tupac ain't never, never had no braids. That's probably what's next. Baby. You just look but like then that is yeah, right. Then that that's tell exactly like, what you're gonna look like. Man, yeah. he skipped away and grew his hair out. <laughs> yep. I just saw Pac. Hey man, full, full beard. Can you or imagine something? that phone call? Like, hey man, I know you're gonna think I'm smoking. <laughs> honey. I'm telling you, get over here. Pac's on my roof, man. <laughs> Pac is on my roof, bro. He's on my roof. But I couldn't imagine someone doing this movie, LT and Demetrius, and it's not you. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I look at this movie, and I've seen the movie three times already. You know what I'm saying? And when I look at the movie, it's everything, bro. It's the mannerism. It's the look. It's the... the Sound. Like, yeah, yeah, there's so much that that is so on point that if if this was my movie, LT, I would be like, man, we didn't, we didn't put this together. Like, this was... Somebody else put this together. Right, right. Like, I, I say that. Yeah, it's it's too I, many. I say that even though even the way he like I said, um, when I say he fell into position, you know, in that type of spirit because I was literally flush, frustrated. You know, what I'm saying right. I had seen, you know, so many you know females, female pox. You know, what I'm saying it's a really? listen. Listen, I'm gonna give y'all something to do. I'm talking about when y'all all get home a little bit with tomorrow, whatever. Just go on YouTube mm-hmm. and search Tupac Audition. Audition. You're yeah. going to no. have... You're going to real auditions? Yes, or yes bro. Yes, you're going to have the time of your life. You're going to... Man, it's, it's, it's a, a I real almost, life. I almost <laughs> wanted to put out a, a, a whole behind-the-scenes DVD. How <laughs> many people do you think you actually saw, looked at, was told about? Thousands. I look, I, wow. I, I, I physically, personally, that's what I'm saying. I sat there day and night. And went through, I'm talking about thousands, thousands. That's how I even came across the white Tupac. Bro, you didn't tell me about that. The man. Latin Tupac. Really? Hey. Yeah. It's online. He, he got on the blue shirt, red bandana, and all of that. You know what I mean? And then, like like I said, even some people told, threatened to um to sue me for racial discrimination because a Latin guy was like, you know, I didn't want to see his audition. I mean, I saw his audition, but I wouldn't let him come in mm-hmm. because you know. yeah, the process usually you 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 die on the vine though. You know what I'm saying? Like it take a lot to just come in, but, but with like, social it's media, it's usually done. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But with right. social media, like I said, I opened it up to I casted a entire net. So and then they were able to contact me because you could just jump in somebody's DM. Right? Yeah, they turned so, it. Into, they actually yeah. turned it into a contest too. Really though, they was can in their anybody, mind. They was like voting on YouTube and Facebook for the Tupac. Who can was get anybody the really argue that you got the part? Uh, like who? You know, who would argue that? It sounds a, sane. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people. Okay, you so almost said a name. Too. <laughs> a LT people. almost said a name. Demetrius, what was like the biggest challenge when you were watching the interviews and trying to like lock down Pox mannerisms for you? Um, I would say the biggest challenge was always like the voice. Uh, Cause he got a, you know, it's it, it's real raspy and bassy, you know what I'm saying. So, but I ended up in the movie. You'll hear like me being able to sound like him, and it was like, my homeboy seen it, and he was like certain parts. He was like, yeah, they uh, that's tight how they put Pac voice on there on certain mm-hmm. parts. I was like, like nah, that wasn't Pac. That was me. He was like, what? Like, so what like happened? What was, lines? I don't even know. I can't even. We're gonna see. You yeah. said, but uh, what happened? I figured out that me smoking the cigarettes on set and the, the blunts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Help get that, you know what I'm saying? That, that yeah. real yeah. girl in my voice, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that's what I was doing. So when I was off, off, you know what I'm saying? Not shooting, so you had, just you had to in between, smoke I was just, just because, like, smoking. Huh? I was Damn. just doing it, and then that's that well, was all it. for the part for the for the art. Yeah, things you now do, you, and you were smoking cigarettes, chain smoking right now. Do, to, do, do you, you right still now. smoke? Chain smoking. Did you smoke before? Where my Newport's big. Now I'm playing. No, I, mean, I never know. <laughs> I like, oh, but but were, were you smoking when you were doing the movie? Like smoking cigarettes? No, no, no. It was like. Like some leaves or something in there. It was okay, like, it was, so it was uh, like oregano. No, no, no. no. We we still, we, what was it called? We still, we still would encourage like doing it because like Pac, he started smoking because him like this is a story from Ray Love. They started smoking cigarettes so their voice can get that rasp and get deeper for their rap voices. Mm, damn. And he just happened to keep on smoking after that. But he oh, started smoking. I didn't know that. You know mm. what I mean? Just by from whatever. But that's what we always like. Smoke the cigarette, get that rasp, and then. 
So you yeah, have another little tradition. Too. Y'all told him to smoke a cigarette. I told him to smoke so a cigarette you, and drink Hennessy. Do you smoke yeah, cigarettes now? Hennessy. Nah, bro, I don't smoke. Okay, at all. do you drink Hennessy now? Oh, certainly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. That one, that one stuck. Hit right. Yeah. With that sponsor. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is there anyone that you guys were nervous about showing the film to because their opinion meant so much, or because maybe they meant they like Pac meant so much to them? Mm, a lot for, of for people. For me personally, probably. I would say Layla Steinberg because mm. that was Pac's manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, she's responsible for. A lot of his growth in this industry um, and getting him to the right people and him sleeping on her couch and all types of stuff. So with her, I was definitely nervous going in because we seen it together. I was like, man, I don't know. Damn, Damn. this is this is tough because you know she she's seen him as a kid, right? Like, fresh right. in Marin County. Um, but after the movie, man, she was just like, you know, I loved it, and she kept it real. She said she came in there to tear the movie down. She didn't yeah, expect man. anybody to get the story right and true and real, and she didn't think that anybody could capture Pac's essence. So when she came out like all excited and thrilled and like loving the movie, bro, that was like a that great moment for me. What about you, sure. LT? So, so that's what I say. That's a two part question. That's like two part, like two part. Right? Hello, <laughs> it's a two part question because he was nervous about how she was going to receive his performance. Me, I was super comp- confident in the content because I know what guidelines I followed. Mm-hmm. You know I me mean? to make sure that you know her portion. And just the film was told in a way where you really can't argue with the through line because the through line is Tupac's POV. So you can argue with me or somebody who's trying to attempt to write something. But if it's told in Tupac's point of view, point of view, how could you argue with that? Mm -hmm. And so with that through line, um, for me, I was comfortable showing it to everybody. And that's because I would not show her like she Layla knows I wouldn't give her a script. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All the time, mm-hmm. even though she did interviews and whatever. And she's like, I just want to read something. I'm not going to be critical. No, it's right. not ready. And they know I didn't turn it over until, until it was ready. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I I was super confident because, you know, I know it was years put into mm-hmm. the body of work that couldn't, you know, I, I didn't even let people see it until it, it couldn't be contested. Damn sure when it, sh- it was shot, I knew for a fact what it was going to be because they had saw the script already. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Now, what about like the, the the Dazzes, the Snoops, the Shugs, Shug. the 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 Diddies of, of the world? Those cats. What did they say when they first saw it? <coughs> well, I, they, I get. Go they, ahead. They came in, man. They came in like you know everybody with Tupac in general. I don't care who you are. Everybody comes in, and you shook my hand, but I you was you was right there ready too. You was really like. I right, I'm gonna talk to you after this. You know what I'm saying? You had that attitude to also, like, you know, what's up, LTA? You, everything was cool because you want to screen it, but it, you know, we've been going back for and a long time. And you do kind of go in with your arms crossed a little bit, point blank. So yeah. every, right. everybody has. So you know, like I'm saying, as long as we've been knowing each other, it was still that day was a little bit like, I, right, you know, I'm gonna give you love, bro, but I'm gonna talk to you after this movie because right. if it if it could go another way, and that's why I explain to people, we had I had such a greater accountability mm. because I know everybody. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. it's like they're not going to blame a lot of other people for the scenario. Yeah, Snoop man. is going to say, man, why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, it's going to be real. Dads too. You know, this is these these people's lives out here. Suge too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Suge's not just going to turn his story over to somebody and just, just go depict me the way you want to depict me. You know what I'm saying? Like our biggest, me and Suge's biggest discussion was, you know, he said, I don't have a problem with nothing that happened, but just don't make shit up. Oh, right, you know, right, right. I got you. Don't make stuff up. And uh, and I'm like, you know, I would never do that. He said, no, nah, I know. That's why I'm here with you every day. You know, and that's what. So people entrusted me with these stories. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was more or less just wanting them to show, what, show them what we did and how we showed them in a cultural sense. I really wasn't nervous, but like Snoop said, everybody came in with arms crossed mm-hmm. to do this Tupac move. What y'all do? You know what I'm saying? And Snoop said, first thing, LT, I came here to see some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta say it like that. Yeah. That's what he said. If it was gonna be, if it was gonna be, not to see some bull, but if it was gonna be bull. And when he saw it, he was psh, he was gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's when the accolades, and that was just like, okay. I wasn't nervous, but And you still. wasn't letting people see pieces of it. 
You were were, were, were cats coming down to the set, or you kind of like closed that down too? Mm, LG? People came. People came to the set. The, the, the set process. You know. Do you know what? Explain the. Up. Like the House of Blues or the concert footage. Mm. I know just in front of that crowd, that had to feel amazing, and look crazy to some of them people <laughs> too, though. Yeah, that's a two part because you know I'm gonna throw it to uh, Meech after setting this. This what it was was that was a combination of what Tupac had drew out and actually did one time in Cleveland. He had an idea for his world tour, but the thing is, uh, you know, Pac was in the studio. He was in jail, mm-hmm. and in in his insurance rate was was through the roof. So he didn't get to do a lot mm-hmm. of performances. So when he had uh, me, uh, all eyes on me, he had this big world tour planned, and he wanted to do this big set piece. So it's that that concert series is a combination of House of Blues and the idea that he had right. that he wanted. So mm-hmm. one luxury we give you in this film for everybody now to finally get a chance to see Tupac in concert. It felt like that, you know bro. I mean? it's and that's what we're trying to give him that and treat. And Demetrius, you nailed that, nailed bro. I appreciate that, bro. You, I mean, that was, bro. That was the most crazy day on set. And um, it felt really like a concert. And I and I wanted to do that. It had to be that, though. That's how I, my mind was. It's like, it, it has to be a concert or it's not good enough. And this is the one thing that everybody was kind of, like, nervous about. Even LT, they didn't know necessarily how it was going to perform. Because yeah. it was like, we had started in December. We didn't shoot the first concert scene to uh, Fe- February 4th. You know what I'm saying? And then um, he's like, rehearsals. He's like, man, I need you to go hard. I need, you know, you got to get it. He's like, yo, your energy, take it up, man. You got to kill it. And the whole while I'm knowing, I'm like, I, got- I didn't practice this. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> man, I, I got this. I'm like, like you man. ain't got to trip. like that acting stuff. I'm going to take y'all word for it. But this, don't trip. I you know what I'm saying? This. I got this for sure. <laughs> Damn. So, uh. Man, that day on set, bro, it was the energy was crazy. Hey, man, and this may sound crazy, but did it ever feel like, man, Pac took over? Uh, because for a second, yeah. yeah, yeah, it looked like for, it. for that was the one thing I will say that it, it felt like that in a, in a sense for a moment, bro. Because my energy, I don't know where it was coming from. Mm. Like it was, I could have did that thirty times, a hundred percent. That was the day because that that was the day that you know I broke down. Man, you know what I'm in making but the even film. just the like yeah, every, everything, like everything, everything. bro. Yeah, I, I had to go to the side, you know what I'm saying? Because there was a moment on that where him and the outlaws oh, were standing God. together, and oh, just my that God, imagery man. and the power. Because, like, I said, and them, that's really what the about outlaws? the outlaws? <laughs> what what did they feel? They was, they was everybody was emotional that day because the thing is, like I said, that that part, you know, of, of the movie was going to be special, you know, and like I said, that part. You know, I had multiple fights because people wanted to just take that part out. And it's oh, like, no, you can't, that's that's the magic moment. That's the, I've arrived. That is, you know, letting you know what we lost, you know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and just the energy and how it had to be. But that was also one of the moments where you don't want to cut and paste that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to edit that in a way where the energy is not there. So it was like, you know, I was so adamant because it's like, you on your own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know I mean, you on your own out there because that's what I'm saying. Like this stage and, and these people, this is the time. Like on, on set and you doing different takes of different scenes, that's one thing. But this is a live audience and their responses to you. If you're not rocking, they're going to, they, the energy is not going to be. Yeah, there. there's no we never we never showed them, you know what I'm saying? And we did yeah, that on purpose. It was a whole reveal. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, that, that, you revealed to the crowd? Yeah, yes. when, the, when the concert oh. started. They hadn't seen me. So, oh, you know what I'm saying? Man. They hadn't seen me. So when that whole the dummy gun coming to bust the, the door bust down and I really come out, they see me for the first time and it was really jumping like that. Crazy energy. Crazy. That, I mean, all of that stuff is real. Like, And then like they sang every song word for word. I mean, put like this. I'm going to keep it 100. They were out there when I look, because I'm you know going to audience. What broke me down was what made me cry that day. Is the energy because mm. they were crying like the I entire swear. audience, like like People most of the girls. Yeah, they was out sure. there, it was in their it crying. Was men in there crying. You know what I mean? Oh, they, were, oh, they were hugging man. on each other. They they was breaking down, hugging on each other, and like you know, um, when how you know, how do you know what audience to put in there? That was just we, it, extras. It, yeah, that was just extras. It wasn't because yeah. the thing is, we did we wanted everything to be organic because that gauges what you really have. For real. So they mm-hmm. didn't see Demetrius. They didn't see you standing around or, or looking at the monitor. Mm-hmm. And you, oh, that's perfect, man. 
That's that's now they come perfect. out and do a rehearsal in front of them or nothing. That's it was perfect. That first thing when it dropped, that was all real. Oh, a, lot, a lot of people like, was nervous about. Yeah, a lot of people, the people was nervous about. I was like, that's gonna give us what we need, though. Trust me on this one. And it happened. And all of that was was caught, man. You, I wish we could have. I hope it's like on a DVD. That energy after the after all the first one ended, they the the crowd, man, like they was still going. They thanked me. Multiple people thanked me for letting them see Pac. Damn. Yeah, man. It, it was. A, it but wasn't even the same way. No more. It was Pac. I've had people that I, that saw the movie. They was like, man, it's like I saw a Pac in concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people didn't get a chance right. to see that. And in this movie, man, it's like you're there and it's mixed right in. You know what I'm saying? And the outlaws on stage and, and everything, just the movement and the happiness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and the stage presence. I was like, man, this you like I'm getting goosebumps now. Like I would watch that. I remember the first time I saw it, second time, third time, same reaction. Where I just I remember the first time doing all I could do. For anybody that was, was watching out. me, all you could see was, if you were behind me, you just saw my hands like, oh. <laughs> and all you could hear sometimes was people going, oh, my God. Like, oh, hell no. Like, I can't tell you how many times, or I seen it with Letty, we just tap each other like, oh, shit. Like, are you, man, like, y'all, we got a, I'm saying we, we got a great piece of product. <laughs> <laughs> all eyes on me, all ladies and gentlemen. And I encourage everyone to get out and see this movie man mm -hmm. and i'm not saying for charity i'm talking about for a good movie a good experience i'm glad it didn't pop up in our barber shops and everything <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. but i really encourage people to get out and man and and the same way we do all the social media you gotta gotta like authentically man get on your social media and and right. because hollywood looks at these opening weekend numbers mm -hmm. for whatever it is. And, and you do have to super serve that. Now we can have hood classics and classics and things that go on and it makes his money. And it's not about the money. I want people to see the project mm -hmm. and I want people to get out in numbers the first week to see the project, mm -hmm. because that also let us know, man, what's our next movie and how mm -hmm. to, and we were saying how we always want to sit at the table. Like, no, let's build our own table. 100%. Let's create our own table, the top, the legs, the chairs, who we invite to the table. Mm -hmm. Like this is a powerful movement that we have here. And for those that know Pac, and I don't mean know him like handshake or hugged or anything, but just no Pac. There is, there is something that was, that was a blueprint that he created that was, that never been duplicated. Right. And what we have to do also, man, is the way that, you know, you would see Pac like, OK, he stood up here. All right. He, he protected here. All right. He was a revolutionary. All things that were Pac. It's up to us also, man, to make sure that we continue a legacy, not just a Pac mm -hmm. legacy. Right. But we start building things where we don't have to go to everybody else to say, can I? Mm -hmm. right. And this Stop is what it. my vision you know, is. It's, yeah. it's so crazy, bro, because I, you know, I heard the song changes. I know it. But I thoroughly listened to it this morning at the gym, bro. And the stuff that he was talking about is like, bro, it's 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 so powerful and real to this day. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It could be used and applied to this day. And it's it's kind of crazy. Like, I think the same way in a sense is I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we as a culture, as a people need to come together and like really be on our own stuff. And so for this movie, you know, like you said, with the box office and all of that, it's important that we support this because, first of all, this is what Pac would have wanted. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got LT, a black producer, a black director, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 a cast and everybody who was there, the crew, everybody working was wanting this to be done the right way in honor of Pac's name and honor of his yeah, legacy. Man. You feel what I'm saying? All in the same spirit. Um, and how great is it that it comes out on his birthday, bro? It's like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Man. Strategic. Come on, man. So so this is it, I day. I just wanted to thank LT because I'm a huge Pac fan and I was – really really nervous like i think a lot of people were because of his legacy because how iconic he is and just watching the movie like lets me know that you put a lot of love and care into this project and it shows and i just sincerely wanted to thank you because mm -hmm. you could tell that it wasn't just about the money yeah, or man, just sure. throwing something out there also like the years that it took to bring this into fruition like just thank you sincerely and Happy birthday to Tupac. And then also, LT, and, and I don't want to go far into it, but just making sure that it was done the right way with the right people. people. No disrespect to anyone. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I know that that that, that John Singleton was a, uh, attached to it. And John is a great produce, director at what he does, but probably for this particular one. You know what I'm saying? Like, this probably wasn't that one. Mm -hmm. and I, And I'm glad that we were able to do 
something without saying, oh, man, we, you know, we got to use such and such or we got to go here or else we're not going to get it made. I can imagine how many times you put it on the shelf and pulled it off the shelf, put it on the shelf and put it off the shelf. Like, mm -hmm. And what we have now, I think, is the best product mm -hmm. that we could have offered up. You know what I'm saying? Without um, sacrificing anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And if anything was sacrificed or if there was any being, we didn't break. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And of course you gotta play some of these Hollywood games, but you don't look at it and say, Oh man, they they bought them, man. Mm -hmm. Like, look what they did to Pac. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Like I I lost, you know, maybe a couple of battles and that and that was just technical things of time and length and run time and, and stuff like that. But, you know, thank God, man, I, I was able to win, you know, most of the battles because the battles that I fought weren't for me personally. They were for Tupac and his legacy and make sure we, we do it right. And and the thing is, you know, it means so much to come to this platform and, and, and this is my gratification. You know, this is my payment to, to have people who are real Tupac fans and real people of the culture that understand it. Like when you get some of these crazy, I call them uh, fake news, oh, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the crack reviews and it's like, who are you? And it's not, and they say, people say, well, you, you're being racist. I'm not being racist. I'm just saying, you know, if you don't understand it, like you, you waste your time trying to convince somebody that's convinced not to right. like something. You right, know right, right. Yeah. Hell exactly. yeah. It's like, it's like, okay, you got an opinion. That don't mean it's the right opinion. And, you know, to, to take a film like this, if you were just to go watch it in your heart, clean slatedly, you wouldn't have, any negative say and like mm -hmm. I said I, my, my opinion I care more about that person who walks in that theater and walks out of there changed and mm -hmm. maybe think about their decision making differently mm -hmm. who may that day may be in the theater you know not not in the theaters Lionsgate don't please don't not in the theater but I'm saying outside of the theater thinking about doing something terrible and that moment in the theater, they decide I'm right. not gonna do that when I walk out of here. Right, right, right. You know what right, I'm right. saying that you know, like you see how we deal with the end, and and you know, <sighs> the, the the average person couldn't understand even the song selection there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because man. It, it's 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 convicted. So dope. Yeah, and it's that, like the, of course we know the ending, but the ending when <sighs> you see that, it's like man, I remember <clears throat> being in L. A. Mm. On radio, and I remember you Pac it. getting shot. You broke it. Yeah, and we, you know, we talked about it on air, so on and so forth. And I remember coming to work and walking in and about to get on the air, and they called me down the hallway and they said, and th this is before Twitter and all the social media. They was like, hey, they said we just got word that Pac passed, and I'm like, no. Oh. So we like we gotta go on air, but we're not sure yet. So you can't just go on and, you know, pock and then everybody's talking about it with the right. ads and hashtags Different. and everything. So we had to sit in the office and make calls to real cats. Like, man, it's okay. Damn. All right. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Damn. What you know about it, man? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm here. Just, you know, we put up. I'm like, all right. So I literally, man, that hallway felt like a mile. Mm. Walking because some people are good with the, being the bearer of bad news. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was about to say on air, and I didn't want to be in there like, "Oh man, oh dude, I gotta see before before the beat say it or before Kiss say it." It was like, "No nah, man, like I gotta say this." So I remember coming on and announcing. I get people to this day that say, "Man, I remember when you announced that Tupac had passed," mm -hmm. and that was the craziest show to me. I get those. I got three shows that come back to me, LT and Demetrius. I get when my mom passed, I called in and told, you know, L.A., I, what I'm going through, I'm not going to be able to make it, that kind of thing, right? When my mom passed and 9-11, uh, the show, because we were on live and we saw the plane go in and we was like, okay, wait, we got to, you know, we got to talk about this. And we was watching people jump out of buildings and everything and then uh, announcing Tupac. Mm. And so when I see that scene, it's like whenever anybody that's in the world, man, if you ever had somebody that passed, if they didn't pass in front of you, you know what I'm saying? Still not you, you, but you also get this, man, I wonder what happened. 
I wonder what, what led up to it. Now, we all knew that Pac passed, and we've seen the, B, the BMW, but when we watch this movie, it's like you're bearing witness to it. And I'm talking about I'm walking, I'm watching, Demetrius, what your pants look like. I'm watching how you had your leg fall over. You know what I'm saying? Like Closure. I'm watching things like that where other people aren't probably watching like for continuity. Where's your hand at? People pulling up. You know, I don't want to get a scene away, but yeah. you'll see it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I'm looking at these things like how how the jersey fall. And mm-hmm. there's just moments. And I don't want to give nothing away, but there's mm-hmm. moments when 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 you're in and it's like the the last outfit. And when I see, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. like. And all, all that was done by design because they were like, well, that's, ta- oh, that's taking too long. Oh, man, it's like, nah, brother. It, that, you know, it was always the strategy, and, and I did it a couple of times in this film where the iconic outfits and the point-specific outfits, they actually just come together because, like I said, and everybody's like, well, you know, because we even back, went back and forth about when, how long it took with the chain, like hold it for a second. Because once you put that chain on, mm-hmm. oh, that's yeah, gonna, yeah. that's going to complete the outfit. And you know, it was oh, like on set sometimes, you know, because he was so deep into the thing. He's like, you know, this feels weird or that feels weird, and I'll have to give him some understanding. Like, please trust me on yeah. it because it's going to come off There's on screen. Beats here. Yeah, it's because like I said, once that chain goes on, and I said it's going to resonate mm-hmm. to people that that's the completion of the outfit. Yeah. And the biggest thing. And in, no that, one, in that moment, if he had a turned around, you yeah. know, so people rooting right. for you in that moment. Yeah. Like, That's what I was thinking, too, LT. It's like you're watching this scene and you know mm-hmm. the story, but you're like, don't go out the door. Don't go out. It the depends door, on what theater pop. you go in. People gonna be hollering. Oh Don't yeah, do it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like damn. But I'm like, I'm going damn. to go opening weekend because I gotta watch it with the people that just going in. Like you know, I've seen the movie. By the time we finish everything we do, I'm five times in. But mm-hmm. I gotta pay and I gotta sit there and I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it from the back because I want to see the oh and the oh, and the laughter and it. I mean, it's a real roller coaster, yeah. bro. It's I always like, say this because Buster called. Buster saw it, Buster called, and he saw it four times in mm-hmm. a row. He's like, I just got to because, and he's like, I need to see it again, but I'll wait to the premiere because yeah. it's it's so much to take in. It's a lot of information. Yeah, man. You know, but it's 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 done well, you know, bro. I appreciate it. That, I mean, well. that's big coming from this community and, and this station. That's what I said. Like, those are the, I don't listen to the, not. These, these are the things that count because I know you guys know and feel. And like I said, this movie was not made just for the Tupacologists. Right, it right, wasn't right, made right. just for the Tupac evangelist. This film is like, if you notice the way the film is designed, that by the third act, we all have the same information. So I don't care if you went in as a novice or never knew who a Tupac was mm-hmm. in life. By the time he's released right there, we're all on the same journey now. Right, right, and right. That's when I go linear. And um, a lot of people, you know, like I said, they want to just jump right into something. It's like, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You got to explain where this fire comes from, where it was set, where it started, where the beginning, like Tupac was born through fire. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was a firebrand. Boom. He said, I remember one moment of silence, and that's when I was born. After that, it was on. I heard that. So the, the, the film takes that energy, you know, it takes that theme also, and it gives you that. And like I said, I got to give a, a attribute to my guy. What I expected from him, he exceeded that. That Demetrius? Yes. Yes, sir. 100% and Boom. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Boom was a great partner. Yeah. You know, shout out to Boom for 100%. He was the, the perfect guy, you know, for this film. And uh, Demetrius, man, he did, he could have stayed at a certain level and just fell upon the aesthetics. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He could have just, aesthetically, I'm that. Right, but he yeah. Did, he didn't. He went into the thinking of the man. He understood how well read he was and he actually read he he would he would sometimes and this is the thing i never share with you like i would i would be proud when he would start talking to me about uh different literature and different thinking patterns and and different you know ideologies of different things because i could tell Pac was forcing him to be come a not that he was a bad human being but just to grow Mm -hmm. and he started excelling in different ways and challenging himself and even now to this day like when i 
talk to him, he has a lot of different views about the world. You know what I mean? So Pac changed him by him playing this. You know what I mean? And not changed to the sense that he's trying to be somebody else. No. He just sparked his brain. Mm-hmm. The theme of the, the theme that we mm-hmm. make the film around is I may yes. not change the world, but I guarantee I sparked the brain. So this movie, to me, is the spark. Starting off with the actor that plays Tupac, his brain has been sparked. Yes, and he's sir. been forever touched. Certainly on that. Dynamite, man. Well, I thank y'all for coming into the neighborhood, <clears throat> thank man. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all go out and conquer the world. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. That's Demetri Ship Jr. All eyes on me. The movie. Make sure you guys check it out, man. LT Hutton, thank you for coming in, thank man. You, Best man. believe that we are Big Boys big Neighborhood. Boy.